So, got a Tucson here that we are not going to unbox. I've owned this for quite a while. So, we're just going to check it out because it's already been checked in. Um, this is the Tucson TS-341. And it's one of the rare ones that actually has a name on the knife. So, it's not some obscure name that, that's out there in Instagram or something. It's actually here and it's on the knife. But it's called the Sidewinder. It's in D2 steel. Um, yeah. Titanium, D2. Pretty nice. So, we're just going to check it out. I am not going to take this one apart. I can tell you it's just got standard bearings. Uh, racetrack uh, spacers. Um, yeah, nothing fancy. There's two screws holding this together. You pop the scale, and there it is. Um, only because this knife is finely tuned machine, and so there's no need for me to take it apart. I will say that I recently put an edge on it, and uh, so that's kind of what got me going. Maybe I should do a video about this one. Because uh, it's an interesting knife. So I'll kind of go through it. Um, the action on this is pretty good. But I did have to tune it. It didn't come that way. So there was some finagling with the lock bar and getting that detent correct. And, you know, when I first got it, I was pretty disappointed in the knife. Um, but... Once I had a chance to work with it and get it right, man, pretty pretty darn nice. It's got this great milling on these titanium scales, um, which, I mean, makes it a little grippy. It's got the carbon fiber up in the bolsters here. Really nice. Yeah. A um, little weight reduction, and I'm... I'm going to guess that it's also potentially for a, a lanyard to go through there. If you, or I guess you could if you wanted to. I don't know if that's it by design. Um, but this action, so you can spidey flick it. You can thumb flick it. I believe you can slow roll that. Um, maybe it'd be better if I went that way. I'm not really good at that slow roll. I'm not. I don't have much dexterity to get all that done. Um, and then it's it's listed and sold as a front flipper with this jimping on top. It was one of my disappointments. Because no matter what I did, I, I can't make that run. I'm not even going to make the attempt to dig my finger in there because I can't make it run. But what I did figure out, finally, was if I just go on the front here where there's no jimping, I can get her. Yeah. Pretty simple. But by looking at this, you would think, well, man, you got to get it here. I'd love to see somebody do that, but... I'm not getting that done, but I can get it right there. Just it's a leverage thing. And of course, now yeah, it's just going to make me look clownish. But yeah, so um, closing action, it's pretty much drop shut. Once you break that detent, give it a little coaxing, it'll it'll run all the way to the bottom. So, really smooth. Runs really well. Um, yeah, I like it. The grip. So, strong grip back here. Very comfortable. The pocket clip melts in there. Kind of disappears in the groove of your hand. Um, it's basically a full forefinger for me. Um, but it's in a way that creates confidence in this strong grip here. So there's no jimping here, but it's got this, I don't know, what, what would you call this? It's got this indenture here that the thumb fits right in. So a strong thumb forward 
feels pretty confident. Um, would I be interested in doing forward work with this knife? I mean, for me, I don't, if I don't have finger protection, I, man, I wouldn't plan it, but in a pinch, I don't know that I'd hesitate because, man, I'm locked in pretty good right there. Yeah, pretty good. Again, I wouldn't plan to do forward work with this knife. Um, I just, for me personally, the way I look at that, that's not built for that kind of work. Um, again, more of this milling. It's just really fine, wonderful, detailed um, you can, there is a finger choil here, so you can choke up on this and get a real good, comfortable, strong forward grip. Again, I wouldn't say it's for this, but, you know, whatever detail, whatever that is, uh, it's going to be able to do that nice and comfortable forward grip. Um, the pocket clip on this was kind of a disappointment as well pretty tough it's short it's not very flexible but i have found that through time using it um it goes in one-handed and comes out one-handed again i think this contributes to this this uh relief in the lock bar so that it's flexible if they just i mean i know it's way harder to do that on the inside um than the outside i I'm assuming it is because so many do it like this. But your pants can catch here going in and out of the pocket. Um, safety on this knife. Yeah, full backspacer in the back. There's nothing exposed here. So we'll quickly flip. And the backspacer also comes down and cradles the blade on the front. So there's there's no contact there. Yeah, so the pocket clip's good, the backspacer's good, and the tip exposure when closed is also a pass. So pretty nice. So price and availability. Um, I overpaid for this knife. So when this knife launched, I don't remember how many years ago it was, but when it launched, um, this got on my radar and man, I chased it and chased it. And this thing went for crazy money. It was so in demand um, that people were bidding these up. I mean, it's just D2 and titanium with a little bit of carbon fiber. But, I, you know, I think it's aesthetically, it had everybody chasing it. Everybody was going after this thing. So ultimately, I got one for around $115, which I thought was pretty dang good at the time because it was definitely lower than it was going. I mean, I remember this knife going for $125, $135. I think I remember seeing prices over $150 for this D2 knife. So they were pretty high, but over $100 for D2, uh, seems definitely extreme pricing, but I was like 115. Um, availability on this knife now. I know that there's, I believe there's current auctions running for it right now on eBay and it's available like in all the secondary markets. I think it's Amazon has it available. White Mountain Knives, I believe has this. And I think, I think White Mountain Knives has this knife for around $85. So if you used a 10% code, which you can find one down below uh, for my channel, I don't get anything for that, but there's one here. I feel kind of special that I have that now. But um, anyways, that's ten another 10%. So you're literally around $75. Is that, uh, is that too much for a D2 knife? Yeah, I mean... I kind of figure anything over $50 for D2 is on the high end of that. So if you were picking this up for $75, in my budgetary mind, um, $75 is high for D2 steel. With that said, this knife is $75.
I think it's absolutely worth it. It's an amazing knife. I, you know, it's arguably an EDC knife concerns me about having to do any type of, you know, put in any type of forward work that if you caught resistance while doing that work, the potential to damage yourself to me exists, but this is pretty locked in. And part of that is because it's not a huge knife. So the, the back of this locks in pretty good in a strong grip. Um, so I, could it be an EDC knife? Man, everything else about it says that it could be. And I'd be shocked if you didn't find a lot of guys that, or a lot of people, guys and girls, that own this knife that don't carry it as EDC. Um, so uh, does that mean $75 is too high? I mean, for the right knives. And D2 is not horrible. I mean, that's the other thing. It's not horrible. People talk about the corrosion on D2. Well, it's not corrosion resistant. Man, I own a lot of D2. And you know what? Not one of them's rusty. I, You know, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm not going to go too far into that because I'm sure that there's a ton of science that says that D2 isn't really a stainless. Like, you know, like it's not corrosion resistant. But... I mean, I don't know how many hundreds of knives, you know, maybe hundreds of D2 steel knives and not one of them's corroded. So I don't know, take that for whatever it's worth, but takes a good edge. This thing's, uh, like I said, I just put a new edge on this um, and it takes a wonderful edge. Yeah. Whoop, 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 whoop. So, is $75 too much for it? I don't think so. I think the knife's absolutely worth $75. It's unique enough and carries well enough that I think $75 is certainly a reasonable price. With that said, uh, one last thing I'll say. There are several auctions on eBay right now where this thing's listed well over $150. People are asking for it. I mean, the fact that it's on White Mountain for $85 with a code $75, I don't know. Anyways, Tucson, TS341, D2. I really like it, and uh, I recommend the knife. Thanks for watching.